I'm the world experience what is in this gift. There's something in you that the world is carrying, the world is waiting for. Every faculty that is needed to be active, I call them into operation right now in the name of Jesus. The theme of this is de-legislation. De-legislation. And for the last few weeks, the Lord has been dealing with me on what it means to legislate. I want to start from Genesis chapter 2 verse 5. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 5. I'm going to be speaking with an apostolic authority. Because I see a generation whose expressions as sons of God will not be restricted to holding the microphone on the pulpit. But I see a generation that will walk into every space and every field. I call them a generation of impact. I prophesy by the Spirit of God. I see a generation of men and women that will know their place in their, in their, in their, in their generation. A people that will walk into sports and entertainment. A people that will function in corporate. A people that will function in business by the anointing. And the same anointing that is being experienced on a Sunday morning will be seen in through their lives on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The gifts of the Spirit that they see their senior pastor manifest on a Sunday morning will be in expression in both meetings. Can I prophesy this evening? I see a generation that will be relevant. I see a generation that will be effective. I see a generation that will be impactful. I see a generation that will represent God in marketplace. I see a generation that will be not known, that will not be known by religion, but they will be known by results. Come on, are you part of that generation? I see a generation that will give a voice to Jesus everywhere. Are you part of that generation? I see a generation that will walk in excellence. I see a generation that will have a voice in the community. I see a generation that cannot be relegated. I see a generation that will be on top of their world. Are you part of that generation? Can we read this scripture while you are standing? One, two, three, go. The latter part of that verse says, the Lord God had not caused it to reign. Why? Because his partner was not on ground. You know, one of the, one, 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 one of the doctrines that most misrepresent God is the doctrine of sovereignty of God. That claims God can do anything because he's God. But here he says, God, the rainmaker, could not rain because there was no man. I came here this evening to let you know that you're a major part of God's plan. In fact, this is your world. What God can do is controlled by what you permit him to do. Is somebody listening to me this evening? Matthew chapter, I believe chapter 18 and verse 18 says, Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you what? You lose on earth. Now, can you see earth comes before heaven? Oh, you didn't hear me. You know that was... You call the shots on heart and heaven co-signs it. Hey. Psalm 115 verse 15 and 16 and we, we see it afterwards. I, I, am I getting across to somebody? Please don't miss this. Don't miss this. This is a word God gave me. Psalm 119 Psalm 115 115 and verse 15. Psalm 115 and the 15 verse. Can you read it? We can read the two verses and verses. In one, two, three, go. Stop. So, there's no argument about that. Who made the heaven? Come on, talk to me. Who made the heart? 
So he's the maker. In fact, Psalm 24 verse 1 says, the heart is the Lord and what? Now move to verse 16. Psalm 115 verse 16. I'm going somewhere. Psalm 115 and verse 16. Psalms 115. 1, 2, 3. Read this one. Is the maker of heaven and earth. But where the heart is concerned, he gave it to you. So this is a man's world. The authority here belongs to man. You may be seated. The authority here belongs to man. And when you hear the word legislate or legislation, it's literally talking about your responsibility as children of men. We've been given the task to run things here. We run the show. We call the shots. We make things happen. You know, it's irresponsible Christianity that pushes everything to God. God, if you really want to, and everyone is looking down and saying, you have not said anything. Because I can only allow what you allow. You know, I need you to know something this evening. God is not a lawbreaker. So don't use sovereignty to turn God into a criminal. God respects the laws that have been put in place. And one of the laws demands that things on earth must be run by men. Children of men. Because they are the ones that are in charge as far as this planet earth is concerned. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 makes us to realize that he made man like himself. Then he turned the control, the authority, and the dominion of the heart to man. He said, let them have dominion. And I've not read another scripture that says God withdrew what he gave man in Genesis 1.26. So what God said concerning man in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 is still valid till today. Let them have dominion over the heart. What is crawling, what is flying, what is in the sea. Everything on the heart was placed under man's authority. Let them have dominion. I want that, those words to ring in your spirit. Let me have dominion. Jump on your feet and shout, I was made. I can hear you and say, I was made to dominate. I was made to call shots. I was made to make this happen. I made this. Yeah. If you believe that, come on, release your shout. Let them have dominion talking about you. So you are the one that legislates here. Yeah. You, you know, there, there are three arms of government. Executive, right? Judiciary and what? Legislators. The legislative arm is the arm that is dedicated to the process of making and enacting laws. And as man, God says, this is your territory. You call the shot. Sit down. You know, man is so powerful that... When they even gather together, uh, shortly after the fall, you know, I said, let's, let's build a tower that will reach heaven. Do you know, God had to scatter their, their language before he can stop the project. Do you know what he said concerning them? He said, whatsoever they have proposed to do, it cannot be restrained from them. Imagination was given to man to create his world. And I came here as a prophet to stimulate somebody's imagination. Maybe until now, the only part of your brain you have used is memory. Making reference to the past, especially the ones that are not so good. You live in regrets and regress. Because to live in regret is to live in regress. 
The opposite of regress is progress. But if all the time the gear of your life is in reverse, you go back in memory lane. What happened in 2015? What happened in 2010? I've come to tell you, no, there's so much in your future that you cannot afford to focus on that small thing called the rear view. When you have a whole windscreen in front of you, that God, they say there is a future. There is a plan. There is a purpose. There is an agenda. I've not given up on you and I've not changed my mind. This is your world. You run things here. My involvement in your world is determined by the permission you give me. Do you know this is so much of a man's world that even when God wanted to redeem man, he had to turn his son into a man. Because Jesus, without becoming a man, would not have had the authority to redeem man. He's a man's world and the only set of people that can make him part here yeah, are men. What is this man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou cares for him. You have made him a little lower of themselves, a little lower than yourself. You have put everything under his feet. You sit down there as if you have no authority. I came here this evening to tell you it's high time you, you met you. I say it's high time you met you. It's high time you come on back. I love what the psalmist say. He say, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, my Kasataba. When was the last time you stood before the mirror and you check up yourself? Say, boy, he <laughs> said, Marie, my God. This is a finished work. My God, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I have a great future. God has an assignment. For God to have brought me into this world, I'm a person of authority. The heart has it given to the children of men. The heart has it given to the children of men. But the question is, are the children of men informed enough to know what is theirs? Do you know how much authority you have? Even before we start talking about a new creation, a man. Let's start from basic man. Man. Shakataya. Kakala. Mekataya, men, hey, they are wired for something else. I've only been around for a little bit over five decades. I think it's safe to put it that way. I've seen things change. Do you know this AI thing that everybody is shouting about? About 20 years ago, we were already talking about it. But it was like in the future. But now the future has met us. Are you listening to me? The future is here, right here. If anybody had told me when I was in high school that the time will come that a car will self-drive itself, I would have said, wow. But we're living in that day now. It's not a prophecy. It's a fulfillment. I know somebody in California that purposely bought a Tesla for his wife. Because his wife was, I mean, was on permanent night shift. And almost every time she would slip off on the wheel. So he said, before you, like they say, you right before Kotokobami. I would rather buy you a Tesla than Kotokobami. So he, he bought her a Tesla. He said, just program it. You can sleep to get you home. The wonders. The wonders. Is in technology? Is in medicine? The creativity. I'm not now, I've not even got into a new creation now. I'm talking about a natural man. Because I've seen people hide under spirituality to be responsible. There's so many greatness that have come out of natural man. In his falling states. In his dead spiritual state. Just because he has an awareness of himself. And this evening, I'm going to be talking about a few awareness that you need to legislate effectively. Don't write yourself off. Don't call yourself or put yourself in boxes that God has not put you. There's so much you are capable of. I came here as a prophet to unleash somebody. I saw in the realm of the spirit a gift wrapped up. 
And the Lord told me, he said, this evening I will need you to open up these gifts. It's high time the world experienced what is in this gift. There's something in you that the world is carrying, the world is waiting for. Maybe you were told before you had nothing. You were amount of nothing. I came as a prophet of God to tell you all the lies of the enemy concerning you. Tonight marks the end of those lies. The greatness that is locked up in you will be released. Your generation will experience you. You are called to call. You are called to, to make decisions. You are called to call the shot. You are called to make things happen. And I declare in the name of Jesus, every faculty that is needed to be active and alive to be a you to be effective in dominion. I call them into operation right now in the name of Jesus. You are not just some ordinary species. You are a species loaded with possibilities. In the world of medicine, in technology, literally in every field, we, we have seen the wonders that came out of this, this, this creature called man. When the Bible says it is in, it is in my likeness, you know what that means? Shakataya. Man was made in God's likeness. Sit, sit. You underrate yourself. You call yourself what you are not just because you are not informed. But can I inform you this evening? Can I enlighten you this evening? Can I wake you up this evening? Awake thou thy sleepers and arise from the dead. Wake up, boy. Come on, turn to your neighbor. Say, wake up. Come on, turn, turn, turn to him. Or her. Say, say, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. Come on, walk around and tell at least seven people, wake up, wake up, wake up. There's so much in you. It's time to legislate. It's time to turn Nigeria. It's time to shape this nation. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Oh, I said, wake up. Wake up, wake up. Masataba ya shataba. Wake up. Seats. Wake up. Wake up. Just because you got a few negative results, maybe in your ordinary level, you know, SSC or whatever. Does not make you a failure. Don't you? I'm not a failure. It was just an unfortunate season. You know, you are not in the right environment. You did not have the right motivation. Come on, shout it again. I'm not a failure. You know, this phrase, good for nothing, you know, it's a lie. I say it again. This phrase, good for, is a what? A lie. Possible. I said, it's not possible. How can I be in the image and likeness of God? And I'm good for nothing. A man made to dominate. Maybe you put me in the, in the environment which is not mine. That's why I look ordinary. Do you know if you take a fish out of water, you will it will struggle every other way. Legislate, call the shot. Man is that important that God said in Genesis chapter 2, verse 5, I cannot cause it to rain because he's not ready. So, literally, we have been called to form partnership with God. In fact, what God does here is based on our permission. You know, in the last few weeks, he's been dealing with me. You are coming into a season of rain. But it reminds me from time to time. He said the rain I will cause will be in partnership with men that are prepared. Because until I have men that are ready to till the ground, I will not rain. Because, you know, it can rain forever if there's no man to till the ground, to put the seed in the ground. Will the seed plant itself? Come on, talk to me. Will the seed plant itself? This powerful scripture, I think 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it says something I love. He said, Paul plants, Apollos water. Now, Paul and Apollos, what do they have in common? What do they have in common? So, the increase of God depends on the planting of Paul and the watering of Apollos. Be 
before God can step in and bring increase, somebody must plant. Somebody must water. And I speak as a prophet of God. Wherever you have been called to plant, get on your feet. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Any field in life where you have been called to plant or water, I declare by the spirit of revelation, I declare in the name of Jesus, you will become aware of that fear. Everyone under the sound of my voice who is struggling presently, I declare from today, by revelation, you come out of that struggle. Poor plant. Apollo's water. Then I can give increase. Man is that important. They are the legislator as far as the heart is concerned. They call the shot. It's what they allow that I allow. And it's what they disallow that I disallow. Maybe it's very, very important. Do you know, in, in the natural, people that coach, one of the things they teach is self-awareness. And self-awareness is not really that bad if you don't get it to the other extreme. Until you, until you now begin to push your self-awareness to the extent that Jesus is no longer the focus. That's when it becomes the full with the problem. But self-awareness is, is good for you to, to you know myself, I can do this, I can't do this. I'm capable of this. I'm aware of certain things. There's an awareness that man needs to be effective. Man needs to be aware of his strength. In fact, he needs to be aware of his weakness too. Because knowing his weakness, we guide his decision. I don't know who I'm talking to. So man calls the shot on that. Man is so powerful that God requires his permission before he can do anything on heart. Okay. Let me say a few things and I will be done and I will pray for a few people. How do you legislate effectively on heart? There are five awareness I want to share with you and I will be done. Number one, you need an awareness of your role on heart. What is my role? Now, I want you to see this whole art thing, you know, a world thing as like a movie. You know, the Bible says, Jesus himself said, he said, I believe in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7, he said, I've come in the volume of the book to do your will, O oh Lord. So there is a script and you have a role. You are formed for a role. Write it down. I was formed for a role. There is a role. There is a role. God is the, you know, the script director, the movie director. So he has assigned different roles for different individuals, different personalities and based on the role assigned to you, you know, you are placed in certain environment, geographical locations. In fact, that was one of the reasons that determined who was responsible for you as a father, as your mother, who you have as your siblings. The environment you grew up is all tied to your role. I know some of you, you don't like the green passport. But it's the plan and purpose of God. The green passport is not a curse. Write it down. It's not a cause. You, you don't want to believe it. I'm a prophet. Write it down. The green passport is not a cause. Somebody say, but you have blue too. But I still have the green. And I carry my green passport with pride. I wear my Nigerianness with pride. I'm a Nigerian. Tell people that care to listen. I'm a Nigerian missionary sent by God to America. I will never deny my roots. God did not make a mistake. I'm not a mistake. I want you to point to yourself and say, I'm not a mistake. Shout it again. Say, I'm not a mistake. You need to be aware that God has a role for you. You are not a misfit. We call it purpose. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 28, I mean verse 26, it says, for all things work together for good for those 
who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, I believe. You are called according to God's purpose. There is a part you have in God's script. The same way Jesus recognized he had a role. You know, when Jesus took upon flesh and he became a man, God had a role for him in the script of men. And his role was to take your space in sin and pay the price so that you can be redeemed. But you are not Jesus, but you are still part of Jesus. So if Jesus has a role, you have a role. You have a role. So you need an awareness of your role. Oh Lord, what is my role? Because you cannot legislate effectively until you discover your role. I pray for somebody that you will not take up someone else's role in life. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said you will not play someone else's part in life. You know, people that take other people's role in life, they are copycats. They are imitators. They are not originals. Have you noticed, for example, yesterday I was here with the technical and the media team and we were playing around. So there was a particular speaker from a particular church. I won't mention the name of the church. And the, the speaker has a particular name on it, which is supposed to be an authentic. I won't even mention that name so that you won't suspect yourself. It was, the name sounds authentic. But it was fake. Somebody went to Alaba or wherever, wherever, and got a casing that has an inscription that looked like the original, but it was fake. But you know, so what happened was that, was it, you know, the head of the media team, of the tanker team of that particular church was telling me, he said, was, he said, when we got this week, I was so excited. But after two weeks, maybe the first Sunday, the excitement of, oh, they got us this speaker, was still carrying them. So they could not pay attention. But after two weeks, they're like, ah. Oracle, it does not. So when, they, when I saw the speaker, I said, yes. He looks like it. He's dressed like it. Even has the name inscription on it, but it's not it. May you, may your life not end up as an imitation of the real thing. So the moment they discovered it was not it, guess what? He became something of disgust. So I was asking them, what are you going to do with it? He said they will give it to children's church. Even our children deserves better. Are you listening to me? But the point I'm making is this. Imitators are rejects. They get rejected. No, no, I don't want it. We can do better. So it's key that you discover the role that God has for you in life. And if you're part of this ministry, you're in the right place. There's no way you will work with us and you will not know us. You will not know you. Because it's not just about knowing the vision of the assignment. It's about you finding your place in the assignment. One of the things God has taught me, has, has, has given me a revelation to communicate to this generation is the understanding of their God-given purpose. Before I formed you, I knew you. Before you came out of the mother's womb, I set you apart and ordained you for something. I want to pray for somebody under the sound of my voice. Whatever heaven has set you apart for, I declare in the name of Jesus, in this season, you will comply with it. There is a role for you. Somebody shout, there is a role for me. I can't hear you shout and say, there's a role for me. So it's important that you have a clear understanding of your role. Recognize, and, but, but a major part of recognizing or finding that role is recognizing that God has an agenda. One of the reasons why people struggle to find their God-given purpose is because they are self-centered. Selfishness does not help your discovery of God's purpose. Remember, it is purpose. All things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. So it has to be about him to find your role. So if your search for purpose is about you, ah, very blue. I was talking to creatives two days ago. I said, you are better off growing than blowing. You know, when you blow, you, can, you blow into fragments that you cannot be glued together again. You are so shattered in the, in the, in the, uh, don't blow, grow. Grow, grow. So make it about his agenda. 
And before you know it, you will find your place. So you don't run the race of purpose. Making it about you primarily. People are celebrated because they are solving a problem. People have money because they are valuable. And the value they have is attached to the problem they are solving. So it was not really about them. It was about their service. That's why we call it goods and services. You don't make those goods for you. You make those goods for others. And you serve another. So you can direct it at you and find purpose. You have to come out of, you know, selfish living. Secondly, you need an understanding of the spirit realm. Write this down. The spirit realm, the spirit realm, the spirit realm, the spirit realm. Listen, there is a world that is bigger than what you see. There is a spirit realm. Am I in the new? Are we supernatural people? Somebody shout, there is a spirit realm. If you are going to legislate effectively, your legislation must be from that realm. There is a realm that is not physically, but yet controls what you see. John chapter 4 verse 24 says, God is a spirit. If you are going to I mean, align with God. He says, what you allow, that we allow. Then you must align and allow from his realm. Then you allow, he allows. But before he can even hear you, that you are allowing it, that means you are in that realm. So carnality can cause your legislative capacity. When you are stuck in the natural, it affects your effectiveness to legislate. Come on, is somebody listening to me? So there must be a conscious decision to grow spiritually first. You know, the other time I was talking about don't blow, grow. You grow spiritually, you grow emotionally, you grow mentally, you go to school. You have a mentor. You know, you submit yourself to being trained. All those things are important. But the first place where you must grow is when it comes to this, you know, you are a spirit. So you have capacity for spiritual growth. Write it down. I'm a spirit. So I say, how do I know? You are made in the image and likeness of God. So there is capacity. Nobody was born to be carnal forever. You are only carnal because most of your investment is in carnality. He that sows unto his flesh shall of his flesh what? Reap corruption. But if you can reap corruption, you can reap eternal life. So there must be an awareness of the spirit realm. And it's from that realm that we call shots. In fact, what we call fit, which is what puts you in a position to receive from God or praise from that realm, the realm of the spirit. Now, don't you know, say, neighbor, there is a spirit realm which is key. So you must, there must be an awareness. Now, the, the truth of matter is, I, I, have you developed yourself as a person to a point that you can pick things up spiritually? I was talking to somebody recently who lost a loved one. And he told me, he said, you know, like two hours before it happened, I picked it up. He said, the only painful part is I could not stop it. But I picked it up. I knew it. I saw it. You are a spirit. Ah, ah. Like they will say, you're by a minier. Just, just because you are covered in flesh and you took your mind to school does not make you mind and body. You are more than that. You are a spirit. You are a spirit. You just need to start sowing onto your spirit deliberately. Come to Gethsemane. Be deliberate. Yes, she de be. Participate in your tribe. Be deliberate. Yakosa tababa. Lakataya. Makasata. Begia. So you say, what are you doing? I'm praying the spirit and you can do the same. Moko sata. Yaka. Aka. Aka. There are depths about you that have not been touched because of carnality. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon no flesh. He said, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. He said, your young men shall see vision. And your old men will dream dreams. But all those operations is in the realm of the spirit. And that's why he's pouring his spirit. To give you access into the realm of the spirit. So the awareness that there is a spirit realm 
is so is so key to your effectiveness as a legislator. Man, but you will pick this up. You will just know. You will know when to bind. You will know when to lose. Last Sunday, at, at the meeting I had at Gradio with Kings, I was telling them about the ministry of angels. We are in a season that much evil is being unleashed. The devil is mad and is trying to take as many people as possible out. Why pray for somebody under the sound of my voice? It will not take you out. But they say there's an awareness of the spirit realm that makes you to send angels out. I release angels for protection, for preservation. My business is not an ordinary business. It's a supernatural business. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 2. He, was th- he said, please, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 2. Let's look at it before I jump into it. Come on, are you getting something out of it? Hebrews chapter 13 verse 2. He said, do not forget to entertain strangers. And me, look at it. He said, by so into it, some have unwittingly entertained angels. It was like, expect angels. Someone lift up your two right hand and shout, I'm a spirit. Get on your feet, get on your feet. Say, I'm a spirit. Shout it one more time. Say, I am a spirit. And I pay attention to spiritual things. Shout it, say, angels. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Shout it one more time. Say, angels. Are real to me. I prophesy over somebody this evening. From today, there will be more involvement of angels in your life. When it comes to the works of your hand, when it comes to your, your education, somebody shout angels. Sit down. Angels are real. Expect it. Make sales. Angels are real. In fact, the kind of testimony you'll be sharing on your different churches from today will be, you know something happened. Somebody just came in, I sat down, we discussed, we signed. Then afterwards, nothing makes sense again, but we have signed. And there's a document. Would there have been angels? Yes. I declare you will entertain angels in this season. Listen, I had an experience. Please, in the name of Jesus, nobody should walk out of this auditorium again. We're closing very soon. I don't want to see movement. Just calm down, everybody. Listen. In my final year as a pharmacy student, I had an encounter I will never forget. Because of the fellowship day, then VCF, before it became King's Sword, I could not make my, what's the name of this course? Oh, it's pharmaceuticals, I can't even remember. And clinical pharmacology. Any pharmacist in the house? Okay. So I too did class pharmacology. The only thing is, I only did Alpha and Omega. In other words, I attended the first class and the last class. Because I had to choose between building my leaders that we hand over to and clinical pharmacology. And of course, I didn't have to think. It's, it's fellowship. Okay, but something happened. Very interesting. Two days or so before the finals, something happened. I was in fact, anybody went to Ife here? Yeah? There's a place called, there's a place called Fajuyo. JJ, I sat down in the corner and I was looking at the volume of the material. Lord, help me. This is all I have to. And somebody from nowhere just walked to my corner. He said, I have these questions. If you don't mind, can we go over it together? Ah, I don't mind. So he sat down. And for the next two hours, we are going over the question one after the other. And after we were done, he went and I was tired. I went to sleep. And I showed up in the exam hall the following day, or the two days after, 90% of the things we went over was in front of me. Ah! Shakala. Don't ask me what I... Distinction. And you know, so when, we, when they are talking about people that made distinction in clinical pharmacology, in faculty of pharmacy, I'm one of them. The only thing is, I only attend first, first and the last class. Please, this is not to encourage somebody to stop classes. But there's a ministry of angels that gets involved in the different aspects of your life. To legislate, you need angels. Demons are real. And it's going to take angels to counter them. So don't just do life naturally. Do life supernaturally. Three. So there must be an awareness of the realm of the spirits. Very key. 
talking about legislate, third thing, you must import, you must understand how important your words are or wrong. You are living in a world that came out of words. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He says all things, all things, all things. There's nothing you see now that did not come out of words. Genesis chapter 1, when God was going to create this, your planet, how did he do it? He was speaking and God said, and God said, and God said, he was teaching you how to run this world. If things in this world came out of words, things in this world will respond to words. This is the new. We understand the importance of words. We cannot legislate effectively if we are careless with our words. Oh, get it, John. But it's tough way. The next time somebody talks to you like that, ah! Yeah. I had a friend when we were in school 1992 you know some of those classes you know it's like the lecturer is from hell he just released him from hell I mean you know set questions for you that I did not teach you I don't know if you have ever had, had an exam like that so it was one of those exams so everybody was angry those could make sense as they were coming out, of course, I can understand everybody being angry. But this one now had the audacity to speak on behalf of the class. Do you know want to know what he said? He said, ah, Kope, wow. My friend rose up and said, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Don't ever speak for me, Kope. The guy looked and said, yes. Kope, I understand. Obey me. Listen, when people are releasing words around you that are negative, why anyway? Ah, no, no, no. This is not ah. Anybody can die anytime. Who oh, somebody just I say could have maybe no, no, no. It cannot be me. No evil shall be for me. No play. Now listen. Where you are today, your words brought you there. Where you are going tomorrow, your word will take you there. If you speak anyhow, you will live anyhow. Words are spirits. The words which I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. Don't talk anyhow. Be intentional with your word. That's why every month I send confession to you. You say, And I'll send it to you. You don't use it. I will fight you. Far from today, anyone that does not use the confession I send, you will see me in your dreams. And it will not be a pleasant meeting. I will just show up say, Oh, mommy. Lighty. Horror. Don't you never say this world responds to words. Don't play with words. Nah. It could have been me. Oh. Somebody died. I say it could have been you. No, if we shall be for me, no plague shall come near my dwelling place. A thousand might fall at my side. And now we are living in an evil day. The devil is taking people out, left out. So you will see it. You know, I live in America and you know people are scared. Some of you say, I don't really care America because of the gun. I live in Chicago and nobody is shooting at me. You will go anywhere God has sent you. There is evil in Nigeria. The people that gun is killing in America compared to the people that are dying on Lagos if I don't load every week. Which one is more? Which one is more? There is evil. Or specialized. I'm saying, you know, specialized evil. So the devil. Is every is in every nation. He's taking people out everywhere. But with your own words, you can chart the path for your life. You will satisfy with me long life. I will not die like a pig. Get on your feet. I will not die like a dog. I will not die like a chicken. I will not die anyhow. I will see my children's children. Somebody shout with long life. I shall be satisfied with. I will not die, but live to declare the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. You live in a world that is controlled by words. Whosoever shall say, shall have whatsoever he says. 
Mark eleven twenty three. So it's what you say that you have. If you are not saying, you are not having. And if you are saying rubbish, you will have what? Rubbish. Turn to your neighbor. For the next 30 seconds, speak some powerful words over yourself. And let your, let your neighbor be a witness. I say over yourself, not over your neighbor. Speak words over yourself and let your neighbor be your witness. Hey, like here, go, go, I'm a champion. I'm going far. I will not die anyhow. I will see my children and my children's children. Mara Limba Barana Island. Oba Kela Rason Yoba. Osborne Motife Ilemi. Shaka. And we house houses in mainland, island, Abuja, anywhere. I'm blessed. I said I'm blessed. What about this? I'm in the 1% of my career. I'm in the 1% of my field. Okay, Barbata Mowa. I'm on top. I have no limitation. I said I have no limitation. I said I have no limitation. Somebody shout, I'm a legislator. You know in Yoruba, they call them Ashofi, Oshofileni. So you you legislate with your words. Moshe Ophileni. Yoruba will say, Mo, ni kui kuki kuku. I won't die any kind of death. I will live long. Emi me don't you know say you will not die anyhow? Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, shout three powerful hallelujah. Let me see that. You legislate by speaking right. You don't speak your pain. You don't speak your pain. You speak your promise. You speak your prophecy. Zakata. You call things that are not as though they were. Yakasa. Yakata. Baby, stand up. Zach, baby. Stand up. Baby. 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 Pay me, pay me. So the first time I said pay me, first of all, she stood up. Just because it's not here does not mean she did not hear. Why did not stop? I kept on saying pay me, pay me, pay me, pay me. And now pay me is standing by me. Your problem is, God bless you, baby. You say it once and it did not show up. So I hope some more. It's not working. The Bible says, be you followers of them that through faith and patience. Do you know what patience means? Consistently constant. Don't just say, baby, once. Say it all the time. Baby, 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 baby. Ah, hey, 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 hey. You don't know where some of us started this journey. Some of us, we started from the nothing. But we kept on speaking. We kept on speaking. See where we are. You want a finished product? Start the journey now. Call it. Come here. I will not. I will not. I will, I will not die, but live. I'm blessed with the blessing of Abraham. I go out. Your your cute pastor. I've known him since he was a teenager. He was not always cute. <laughs> I met him as a dancer. He was a dancer then. And she was an intern. Look at what internship did. Bam bam. You know, <laughs> you know, listen, if you will not stop speaking, these things are laws. Go oh, see, no bad bunny, I respond. Wake up and call things. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm blessed. I'm helped. I'm assisted. I'm, I'm on top. I'm dominant. All things are working together for my good. My needs are met, my bills are paid. I'm desired by nations. Listen, your pastor told you that you know the plan was for him to come to America until God said that's not the plan. Then when God said not when God said not the plan, that's not the plan. God now gave me a word for him by prophecy. Now, some of you, you are not smart enough to document document prophecy. And the prophecy you have not documented, you can't fight with. 
Paul told Timothy, he said, which a good warfare with the prophecy that have gone. I go, eh, eh. You don't get this. He will praise. I call lately. Give him a prophecy. He said, Shola, God told me, you're not supposed to come to America now, but when the time comes, you will come like a king. And that's what happened. An organization was interested in him and they sponsored him. And he came to my house in Chicago and said, prophecy fulfilled. But that, that thing you call prophecy still needed the vehicle of words. That's a, so the power of God, the intention of God had to be carried by words. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. You know, words is so important that God named his own words. You are now just playing with words. Ah, what mean that? Oh, correct. And never your life. Ah, so best more. And please don't use your. And that's why I'm saying you will every idle words. Don't use words are not meant to be carried anyhow. You point them like God. Boom, I shoot in the boom. You are blessed. You are held. You are smart. You are the head and not the tail. Sit down. Sit down. Fourth one, I'm giving you five, so I'm I'm, I'm quarterfinal now, semi-final. So number four. Number four, listen, you must understand the method. Write it down. You must understand the method. We're talking about how to legislate. What is the method? Now, grace, you know, when I was thinking about this meeting, the Lord told me to tell you something. He said, tell them grace was not something I designed to fix you. But grace has always been the method to deal with you. Even Noah, before the New Testament, Genesis chapter 6, verse 8, he said, And Noah found grace. Grace has always been God's preferred method where dealing with humanity is concerned. So if humanity will legislate, he must understand that great grace is the method. So if you are there, you are so performance-wired, effort-oriented. Uh-uh, you don't get it. Grace is the method. If at all you will perform, make sure your performance is fired by grace. That's why Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God and the grace which was given unto me was not in vain. He said, I labor more abundantly than all my peers, yet not I. It was grace that fired me. Effectiveness, productivity can only be by grace. You must understand God's method. You want to legislate. You must be, you must, <laughs> you must specialize in receiving grace. Because what God gives is more than what you can deserve. You can never earn what he gives. Just receive it by faith. I live by grace. Now, you know, we use this phrase, I live by faith. The reason why faith is there is because grace is there. Because faith is only relevant for grace. Romans chapter 4 verse 16. It is of faith that it might be by what? By grace. So, understand grace. So, what does that mean? You, you elevate the favor of God over your performance, over your effort, over your activity, over what you are doing. Ah, a lot more people try. Uh -huh. Lord, I elevate your grace. Primarily, it's about your grace. It's not of him that runs, it's, it's not of him that will it, but it's of God that shows mercy. For the race is not for the swift, the battle is not for the strong. You don't win in life because you are smart, you win in life because you are helped. The people that legislate effectively are people that know how to. Drink grace. They know how to receive from God. Lord, I receive from you. We come with this with of grace. I'm obtain mercy. And listen, talking about God's method, you can never talk about that God's method of grace without mentioning mercy. Because every time grace is on a journey, mercy is there. Because mercy must stop judgment before you can receive favor that grace brings. So that's why you come to the throne of grace and the first thing you do 
is to obtain mercy. I don't know what has gone wrong, what you have messed up. Listen, mercy ensures the judgment you deserve is not given. So that you can receive the favor you do not deserve. Am I talking to legislators here? Come on, who are the legislators? These are legislators by grace. We legislate. I'm like, what I deserve where? Oh, grace in me. Uh, we have received the gift of righteousness among many other gifts. It's an era of gift. Oh, yeah, man. Just bring it. I keep on receiving all his of Satama. <laughs> matters. He said of his fullness we have all received. Grace upon grace. Would live so long. God will never be tired. Why are you tired? He said come boldly. And you're like ah, you, you look somehow. I came last week. I'm coming again. Come all the time. Oliver twist in the spirit. Come again. Come again. In fact the more you draw the more he, he grows. You are talking about a God who loves to give. God is not rich in pounds. He's not rich in dollars. He's not, he's not rich in yen. Of course, he's not rich in naira. You want to know how God is rich? He's rich in mercy. Ephesians 2, 4. For God who is rich in mercy. Opombe. Do you know how he loves you? With great love. He said, come, come. There must be a posture of receiving. Since he gives grace to the humble. Are you humble enough to receive? Because God is about to release some legislators on a whole new level. Things will happen in your life that is beyond your explanation, beyond your qualification, beyond your diligence. In spite of your limitations, you will see grace speaking, grace announcing, grace declaring. Oh, Basa, somebody lift up your two hands and shout, Grace! And lastly, function from rest. Function from rest. That's our mode. We know the method is grace. The mode is rest. Get on your feet. The mode is rest. The new, you're about to enter in some new levels. I speak as a prophet of God. But God says this new level, the mode is rest. Somebody shall rest. Somebody shall rest. The budget of this one day meeting is going to be in the neighborhood of 50 million. Three years ago, when pandemic struck, I said, and your senior pastor were talking, what's the income? As of that time, the income was 300,000 naira a month. And in three years, how do you go from 300,000 naira a month to doing this? How can you? Eh, God says, and God told me to say, I should use that to announce to you. Where we take to you, take you to in three years. So, ma try it. Ma try it. You know, I remember the first time your pastor discussed this place with me. I came by and said, Daddy Sheikh will see. Chair, need reservation. We need more reservation. But you can expect, I mean, I mean, that's true now. I care for you. Last one, yes, see, Kokon, just eight million, just one day. But I never said no, I'm a man of faith. But one of the things God told me when He gave me the vision of the new is this. He said, There are things that they we want to do that you will not understand. That just because you don't understand it does not mean it's wrong. I said, So I check on me, how about money? How is it? How are we doing? How are we doing? Look at it now. In fact, as this meeting was going on, we already realizing we are having problem because next year we don't expect to be on this. So I have a contact with with TPS. I'm already contacting them. I'm serious. So, okay, let's talk. Let's talk. What will it? What will it cost to use TPS? In fact, as the meeting was, you know, I'm a man of action. We're already talking. Okay. Because what God wants to do, it become a few breaks. Don't bring your local head to stop a global plan. And the only way you will get there is put yourself in rest mode. Because until you rest, your five loaves will not feed 5,000 people. That's why Jesus had to insist in Matthew chapter 14, 19. See it! See it! What I'm about to do is about to blow your mind. See it! 
seeds. I'm about to take you to levels that no calculator will be able to calculate it. No estimator will be able to estimate it. Seeds. Because when you seed, the multiplying factor of grace sets in. Do you know the best of man comes out of his rest? The best of man comes out of his rest. Genesis chapter 3 verse 12, I believe. Man was sleeping when Eve was made. Genesis chapter 15 verse 12. Abraham was sleeping. And it was not just any sleep or deep sleep. In both deep sleep. Maybe your own sleep is not deep enough. That's why God has not been able to do much. Because they sleep, my friends. I don't want you interfering. This Oriya Olegbe, there's nobody, your natural is beyond the grade of your natural mind. So sleep. He put Abraham to sleep. He put Adam to sleep. Adam, God, can I prophesy as a prophet? Adam woke up and saw you said, wow, God is about to perform some wows in your life. But he said, you will have to sleep. If I say it, I will do it. I'm waiting to receive governors from the new. Senators from the new. Bank owners from the new. Very soon, I don't know what I'm talking to, but God told me, he said, there's one of you. He said, the way I will raise you in five years' time. Hey, if you know I'm a prophet, take this seriously. In five years' time, God told me, he said, there will be people here that they can single-handedly pay for this conference. And the people, those people, they are the ones shouting now. Bachelor, Bachelor, Kini, what's the budget of this conference 2024? Please, I would love to have it on time so that I'll let this pass, boss, here yeah, quickly. For such rain comes from rest. God will hit you with blessing. Bah. Ascent blessing. Bah. In fact, the first three months, you'll be balancing yourself because, oh, you are not used to the rain. Say, Kilo Shele. Kilo Shele. Kilo Shele. How did I get here? Now listen, this air does not just carry oil for prophesying. It has oil for prosperity too. I declare in the name of Jesus that by rest you will enter into a new realm of prosperity. I'm talking about deals that on my wife, they will bring it to you. You won't have to chase it. People will seek you. People will want you. People will desire you. People will want to collaborate with you. But it comes through rest. Somebody shall rest. You know, a major part of the man that will till the ground has to do with the prosperity of that man. A broke man cannot till the ground. When it's season of harvest and God wants to load up his people. That was why he ensured before they left Egypt, they will not just live as broke as, as slaves. He said, this one, he said, I will load them. He said, hey, Lobeo, before you leave, oh yeah, I will take from the Egyptians and put in your hands. Stretch forth your hands. Stretch out your hands. There's a, there's a prosperity that comes in the place of rest. Can you bring the Holy Ghost for the next two minutes? And you will lay those hands on yourself. Legislate. I said legislate. Legislate. Bring the spirits. Leg is
What a conference. So God told me as I was going up, he said, go and lay the word on them. Tomorrow, at the impartation service, because it's worship and impartation service, hopefully God will permit me to lay hands. But today, several words have been laid on you. Baba. Baba. Pastor Oju. Pastor Ebukun. Pastor Shola. Bishop Wale. Pastor May. Me not to agree with me. Ah. So, do you know what will happen? You will now take your mind where your spirit is. Because your spirit is already in sync with Christ. Because he that is joined with the Lord is what? One spirit. But the problem a lot of times is that our mind is not there. So when you submerge yourself in this kind of 10 hours, bah, 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 bah. reset, bah, bah, bah. you wake up tomorrow morning, I go, ah, why don't they? <laughs> What's the balance? I don't believe, Jade. That impossibility, Jade. That limitation, Jade. Zakata Yakasa. Reset of dominion. Reset of rest. No panic. Reset of joy. Somebody say, ah, I thought you were talking about rest. People are too bad joy. They now list. Joy is the proof of rest. <laughs> Oh, Valerie, oh, we are not resting. Uh -uh. Why do the eating rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves against the Lord that is anointed. Let us cast their cause and pray. For he that sits in heaven, two things, oh, he's seated and he's laughing. He's seated and he's laughing. Record breakers, seated and laughing. From rest. How about this? You know, listen, people that know me, even when I'm joking, I'm listening. I've joked over so many people that they have they have children to the for the proof of the joke. I just say, ah, Listen, as I'm saying it, in my look, I'm not joking, no, and I'm joking. But listen, as you are laughing, your level is stepping up. What about this? The businesses, the level of businesses that you are celebrating now. Wait, very soon you'll be rejecting them. Let me explain. They say, ah, no, 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 no. Hello, we from company, yeah. You know, we don't, we can't put our resources. But why help me? Why help me? Can you laugh if you know that's the realm you are entering now? Pray more. For the rest of eternity, my father, my father. Listen, level that law where we are going. You have to be rich now. Turn to your neighbor, say, Neighbor, show God. Did you hear? If your neighbor is Ibo, speak Ibo, speak your say, show God. Did you hear? Did you hear where we are going? You can't afford to be broke. You can't afford to be a mediocre. And by the way, in this house, if there's a word we don't use, we don't hustle. Don't you never say, we are not us last year. We are blessed. I felt something in the house. I'm going to say it to Yoruba. God told me, say, learn if you do what Tony Onibuku. You know, I will laugh hey. like somebody who is blessed. Ah. I see the heaven, so I laugh. Ah. He will sit in heaven, ah. laugh. He will sit in heaven, laugh. Ah. Cause he will sit in heaven, laugh. 
When he ordained me in 1997, November 21st, as he was laying hands on him, on me, God told him, He said, He's a strange prophet. But you still told me today. That's why I'm coming for the conference. I'm coming to do with him in November. Listen, we are strange. No. You cannot. Six years ago, nobody could have predicted this. King's word, people don't understand. I want you to understand. King's word, he knew. Oh, yeah, one more. I told me, don't mind, yo. Let me pray, Yoruba. From today, that's the way your life will be. <laughs> people say, you don't even make a word here before you know how to yell me. How to yell you? I'm speaking prophetically. After I said, oh, yeah, me more. Oh, yeah, me more. It's strange. There's a strange oil upon this ministry. I said there's a strange oil upon this ministry. That oil brings prosperity. It brings progress. I declare over you, under that strange oil, prosper! church with my parents. No, I just remember one of the songs they used to sing. enough to catch it. God is about to elevate you. I said God is about to elevate you. Listen. God told me 
Say, tell everyone under the sound of your voice tonight. Nothing less than top 1% in your fields. Oh yeah, write it down, write it down. Put it to your iPad. Top 1% in my profession. One, not I know, one. That is the agreement tonight. You came to this conference to be part of the world top what? One percent. I kept on hearing one percent. Top one percent. Top. That's where we rule. Top one percent. 